Now tuning in to Earbud Media, audio for everyone. I'm glad that you have a, a bean burrito at eight. <laughs> They're almost nine. Actually, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. No, I'm not. I'm, when I say that, I'm not saying I'm eating a bean burrito. I'm saying I am an, a bean burrito. Like, I'm in a blanket burrito. Oh. Like, I am sh- snuggled like a bug in a rug. You know? Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm honestly, either way, if you were a bean burrito, <laughs> eating a bean burrito, I, yeah. I would believe also, it either way. The morning is apt for a bean burrito. I believe so. That's what I, I believe mean. that so much. Actually, I believe almost anything is apt for the morning. Oh, great! I'll eat pasta in the fucking morning. I'll eat leftovers in the morning. I'll eat pizza in the morning. Fuck you! <laughs> I know that that's <laughs> actually kind of a hot take for some people. Like, I think that there's some people who believe that mornings are specifically for like breakfast type food. I hate it. Don't limit yourself. I know. Breakfast food can be for all times of the day, and all types of food can be for breakfast. I used to be like that. I used to also be a hater. So, you know, like, expand your mind. (laughs) Because there's a lot of foods that deserve to be eaten during breakfast time. I guess. And also, I think college does that to you, you know? How I'm doing, thank you for asking, um, is... Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) I, so it's like officially cancer season now, um, which means yeah, baby. that I have never been stronger and I've never been weaker. So it's great. Um, <laughs> I choose to not blame it on cancers and I choose to blame it on 50 shades of gray because yesterday, Okay. well, so here's the thing. Uh, so yesterday morning, We were planning to record, and so I was listening to the audiobook that I have, and in the middle of that, I was like, ooh, I don't, ooh, mm." (laughs) hmm. And now I know with, I know that your initial reaction to that, Cody, might be like, those are E.L. James sounds. Nope. (laughs) Nope, those are not. Those are, um, ooh, Allie needs to go die. And all I'm saying is, is that I think Fifty Shades made me sick. So, that's where I'm at in life now. But that's just my thesis on the statement, is I think listening to Fifty Shades of Grey made me physically ill. And that's, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. So It's been great having you. Um, please get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> You've been, it's been 10 minutes too long. I, I don't know. There's literally a timer here. I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was your cue. I don't understand. We clapped like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Did you think we yeah. were just really happy? I don't know. Come on. Cody, I'm so excited today. We have so many exciting current events. Yeah, dude. Our shit is current as fuck now. I know. It's very good. I know that you tweeted about a very exciting article. Would you like to go first today? There was an article that you tweeted about earlier this week that you were incredibly excited about. Would you like to go first this week? Yes. yes please, please, yes, please. Yes. All right. So IndieWire was like, what the fuck, everyone? Um, I'm going to cater an article specifically to Cody's interest and no one else's. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so they sat down with our boy Rob. Zach, uh, Zach Sharf did. Thank you, Zach. And gave us a list of 15 films that Robert Pattinson wants us to see. Thank you. And naturally, I'm inclined. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Yes, tell me and everything. And it's fine. Like, it's a good list. Like, there's, you know, surprisingly a lot of French New Wave, which is fun, but also kind of seems like a Robert Pattinson thing. He seems like a little pretentious, but in, like, a fun way. But he does say that Breathless is one of the best representations of a relationship between women and men, which is interesting, but that's neither here nor there. Um, he loves The Exorcist, which is great. Great. Same. I love that. I love that. There's a lot of movies that I have not seen, but I am also 
just infatuated by. Um, God, so much French New Wave. There's so much French New Wave. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? And then, no, I, listen, I, I get it. I get it. I love French New Wave, and I hate how much I love French New Wave, but also, my man. But yeah, this, it's a great list. There's some, there's some good flicks up in here. Honestly, thank you, Zach. <sighs> thank you, Zach, so much for everything you do. Something formative must have happened to our pets in the early 90s for all of these films. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest and, like, The Exorcist just, like, double fist and be like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Cinema? I understand. God bless. Yes, there's so much happening on this that... And all of the the screen caps that they chose for them are just make it very pretty, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Very good. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, our pets. This Thank is all you. very good. Watch them all? Watch them most. Sure, yeah. Watch them. Enjoy <laughs> them. Yeah. Watch The Exorcist. If you have to watch, watch The Exorcist, the yeah. Watch The Exorcist for sure. If not for us, for Rob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for the culture, for sure. Truly. The other movie that you should definitely consider watching, if you can, is Incredibles 2. Bye-bye. Because, wow, first of all, um, also for the culture. One thing to consider, obviously, as you may have seen in the discourse, is epilepsy warning, migraines warning, lights, like, all of the warnings for sure. All the senses, really. Yeah, because there's so many flashing lights. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about is um, Insider did a piece last week. Um, Susanna Heller specifically did a piece um, kind of rounding up all of the tweets of people being convinced that the, one of the new superheroes, Void, um, was inspired by Case 2. And it's so good because this superhero um, is voiced by Sophia Bush, which God bless. Um, and one of the best things, and I think Cody, you had mentioned this too when we were discussing it, is there's a lot of like side by side photo comparisons, <laughs> <laughs> and it's very choice. I love it a lot. It's really good. One of my personal favorites is from the Twitter user Kate Blanchett Gay. Um, yes, it's very good, and it's a comparison between I think it's at isn't it at the Cannes Festival. Um, of, <laughs> of Case 2 looking at Kate Blanchett, and then it, their screen caps from Incredibles 2 of Void looking at um, Elastigirl, and it's just like, <laughs> there's just like uh, captions of it saying lesbian panic attack, and it's just <laughs> the most relatable thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, it's really good. Because anyone who looks at Kate Blanchett just like fundamentally changes their whole life uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's very good I love it a lot I okay here's the thing that's unrelated to this podcast but I need to share oh my gosh so I have a movie pass but one of the things is that since I got it recently I can't see movies more than once I have seen Ocean's 8 more times than I need to <laughs> like I should say out loud <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very good. It's very good. That's all I have to say. K. Blanchett is very important to me, personally. Yeah. Um, I, we don't need to spend a lot of time on this. I just need to talk about it specifically for the title. Um, uh-huh. it's this Richmond News piece talking about wine. And I just to have a question... As someone who does not drink alcohol, and as specifically as someone who does not drink wine, the title is Wine 101, Fifty Shades of Grey, White, Pink, and Red. Hmm. hmm. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> now, I, hmm, is, hmm? <laughs> is that, is that a thing? I've never heard of gray wine. Are you supposed to... Isn't that poison? (laughs) Do you drink liquids that are gray? Oh, that I'm control-effing this bitch right now. Thank you. 
Um, it looks like, okay, um, so gray wine is, um, a specific kind of rosé. Oh. So, like, it's, a, which is the grossest way of describing it. It says, a few rosés have the color of onion skin and are termed this French phrase, also known as gray wine. Huh. Now, onion skin is not, <laughs> as a food writer, maybe not something you would use <laughs> yeah. to, to, to describe things nicely. But hey. Yeah. Um... I I want you to know how hard it is for me right now to hold back <laughs> from making a Shrek reference. That's all I'm going to say. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know. I mean, that I hate you. <laughs> but like I don't know a lot about wine, but I do know that it has body <laughs> and it has layers. And you know what? I thought you were going to be like, I don't know a lot about wine, but I do know a lot about Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. I do know a lot about Shrek. Oh my god. <laughs> but wine has layers. Oh my god. Shrek has layers. Wine has body. Shrek's got that body. You know what I mean? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? They both have no. layers. <laughs> Not a- you get it? They're both thick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not everybody likes wine. Not everybody likes Shrek. But they're both oh wrong. God. Truly, the comparisons just never stop, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a conspiracy. I believe Oh, it. my God. Um, speaking of a conspiracy, so our girl, Ileana Kadushin, for yeah. some reason came up an an article um, from Voices.com. God bless. Hell yeah. Um, and so I was reading this because it's like, how to become an audiobook narrator with Ileana Kadushin. God bless. Um, also, the brows, that forehead, it's a look. Yeah, she's cute. As I was reading this, what I got out of it is that the Twilight series was her first audiobook? What? That's crazy. Yeah. Just like, right out the gate. Yeah, just a star. A born star. Yeah. Just, like, a voice for the gods. Holy crap. So, thank you, Ileana Kadushin. But one of the things that she mentions in this is that she usually likes to take some time to prepare. So, she's like, typically I get anywhere from one to two weeks to read the manuscript before stepping into the recording booth. Sometimes more if the manuscript is ready. With Twilight, I had a bit less time. And so it's like, okay. (laughs) Shame. (laughs) Uh, Thank you, Ileana. Um, I'm reading this, like, bio of hers now. Yes. And she's done over 80 audiobooks. Yeah. 80. She's on her grind all the time. she's also... A musician, a film producer, she has a podcast, an activist, she teaches at NYU Tisch. This woman is everywhere. Oh yeah, Ugh. she's the best. I enjoy her so much. If you look at her website and you scroll down, there's a form for her audiobook narration, but if you oh look- Oh my god. But it just like covers up the <laughs> dude's face. <laughs> Yeah, there's a photo of her and Stephanie Meyer, and she's, like, holding the audiobook for Twilight, and there's also this guy here. <laughs> but, yeah, the form just scrolls right over her. <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's pretty good. Oh, she's so cool. Wow. Can we have her on our podcast, since she has a podcast? I <laughs> would cry. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would be a dream come true, honestly. Oh my god, the podcast is her and her husband. (gasps) Oh my god. Uh, Are they, okay, are you on that part of the website right now? And they're both in cowboy hats? Yes. Oh my god. No. (laughs) With a call to action to the community at large. Stop. I love them. Okay. We're changing the topic of our podcast. We're only talking about these two. It's fine. (laughs) Our podcast is this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yes, I adore her so much. She's great. Could you do me the honor of talking about this last part, please? Or at least introducing it, because I don't know if you've actually listened to the... I have not. I okay. refuse, but I will. Because <laughs> I, okay, I have listened to it, and I've swooned, so... Oh my I'm God. still swooning. Well, Allie's swooning because Entertainment Weekly posted an article that was Let Robert Pattinson serenade you with a love song from Damsel. Ooh! <laughs> and it, it includes a quote so wonderful as, no matter whether you're playing a character or not, there's something about singing when you're naked. Well, and that's just a great, mwah, just chef's kiss. How is he already 32? Wasn't he just like 17? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> I don't know why. I thought he was closer to our age. No, he's a he's living his life. I guess I always see him with like a beard and he, he was looks like, like he's closer to our age when during Twilight, which was if you remember a long time ago. I guess that's true. I guess I do watch Twilight like every day and I'm like, oh yeah, he's like <laughs> he's always my age. It's like no, that's yeah. not <laughs> that's not how that works. We're just some strapping twenty somethings. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, I guess that's more <laughs> movies are old. <laughs> it's more embarrassing for me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So I listened to the song. And so throughout Damsel, because it's a Western, right? So he's singing this with a little bit of a twang. And I just, like, cry because uh, <laughs> all of the press tour that he's doing with Damsel, they keep making this pull quote of him where he's like, accents are hard. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that it took him, like, 20 minutes to get just that quote <laughs> because yeah. he's such a difficult person to interview. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because he just won't stop talking about, like, random bullshit. Um, he's like, have you heard <laughs> Please of... Please stop talking about Breathless. <laughs> yeah. Stop. stop talking we about French films. <laughs> we're not... We're trying to talk to you about your film. Um, so, yes. It's so cute and adorable. And he's like, can I... He's, like, talking to the other person in the film. He's like, can I play you the song that I'm talking about for this other woman? Um, and it's so pure and great. And I love it when he plays songs because they're sweet and adorable. And it's fine. I'm just dying inside. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's fine. It's fine. I'm just... It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So, great. Uh, oh, my God. Okay. So, we have some questions. Um, the first one isn't a question, it's just a comment that, um, Yellowstone TV is a new show that's coming out on Paramount, um, that Gil Birmingham, who played Jacob Black's dad, is on, and it looks really good, cool. and the reviews seem really good, so that's cool. Right. Um, Go to not Spawn, just, it looks good, and Kevin Costner's yeah. in it, so, cool. Hey. And it's about, like, oil fracking on, like, indigenous land is what I got from it. I love that. So, cool. I have no idea other than that. I just Googled it. Sure. Would you like to read the first question question that we got? Yeah. Would you guys rather be in the Twilight universe or Fifty Shades? I don't know what your answer is going to be for this. What do you mean you don't know what my answer is going to be? It, I, I don't, I mean, I could <laughs> guess, but I have legit no idea. I mean, like, the Fifty Shades universe isn't another universe. It is this universe. So, I like, don't I mean, know I'm... that. <laughs> what do you... <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I don't... I, the Fifty Shades universe is just now, but, like, what, seven years ago? Yeah, it's like... That's it. I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it is my... It is, like... It is a contemporary, like, regular-ass fucking setting. I don't know that because the zip codes are wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it all okay, seems... Okay, well maybe there might be a couple of like, you know, technical errors, but I, it's at least there's the semblance of a regular ass, like, town. It seems close enough, but wrong enough, yeah. and it's messing with my brain. <laughs> okay, well the alternative is like, there are monsters. <laughs> That seems real to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Finally a space where I'm affirmed, you might believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously Twilight for me, so. Oh my god. <laughs> it's 
gonna kiss on some vampires, you know. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. Is that Twilight for you? Are you actively choosing Twilight for once in your goddamn life? No, I'm gonna choose Fifty Shades. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I, this is just this is just me moving to Seattle and like being a few years behind. That's all the differences. If I get wrapped up in like a sex thing, fine. That's you know it's far for the course. I did this for my. I, I chose this life. This is what I, I did this to myself. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's fair, honestly. But there's like Twilight. There's like a lot of danger there. It's like a lot of like you know you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know. <sighs> that's fine. You know what? Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. I Life is dangerous now. <laughs> like, it's fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. What's some fucking werewolves, you know? I wouldn't mind not having to pay for my highlighter, you know? Um, Yo, that's right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. Some good shit. The next question is, if you had the opportunity to book him, would you want to have Pete Davidson as a guest on the pod? Yes. Please, God. Yes. I, I, part of my, my bender, my Pete Davidson bender, um, I, Oh, yeah, how's that going, by the way? It's, listen, I am drowning. <laughs> I saw so many tweets that just say big dick energy, and I need to, I keep, need to delete the app. Listen, from my existence. that's so I real. I can't. So Aquafina has a talk show on Go90. Does it? Which is so, what? Does it? Why? What what do you say? Why? No, Aquafina the rapper, the one who's in Ocean's 8, oh. the movie that you've seen 7 million times, okay. not the water beverage. <laughs> I was so shook for a couple seconds. <laughs> okay. No, so Aquafina, wonderful gal, has a talk show on Go90 and like one of the like first episodes is with Pete Davidson and I watched it and it's very funny. And I had a I had a good laugh. God bless. Okay. And it's just a good dynamic, the two of them, because they're very different people, and I love it a lot. That's so nice. Okay. Aquafina's like, fuck you, fuck your shit, everything. <laughs> and Pete Davis is like, I'm just happy to be here. I'm like... <laughs> I love that. Having a good time. I would love to have Pete Davidson as a guest on the pod. My only concern is not for him, it's for me. I am personally <laughs> very weak for Scorpios, um, yeah, always. Because of the fact that, as I've now realized, as I've grown, I have a lot of Scorpio in my chart. Um, sure. And so I'm very weak to them. And so <laughs> his Scorpio energy <laughs> makes it's me very so weak. So strong. <laughs> um, and so I would very much be Ariana Grande with a lollipop staring lovingly <laughs> at him. Uh, Especially now in cancer season, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Yeah, so that's the thing. But yeah, he seems fun. Yeah. He seems very self-deprecating, which is such a mood on this podcast, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like I feel like he's he has some thoughts about Twilight and Fifty Shades, you know what I mean? He has to. He just got some opinions. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I legit thought you were talking about water. I'm so goddamn thirsty I all can't. the time. I was just like, fuck, you know what I could use? Some water right now. Hey, folks. <laughs> welcome to this ad spot. Um, <laughs> this is sponsored by Aquafina, the water brand. I would literally never. No. No. That water's trash. I would never sponsor, wa- like, water you have to pay for. Are you kidding me? That's... Oh, my gosh. No. What if it was, like, Fiji and, like, some, like, bougie-ass water? Like, some... No. Some bubblies. No. Bubbly water? Different story. Sure. Because different... I can't I have to buy bubbly water. That's true. But regular water? No. That's in my home. Yeah. <laughs> I have that. Yeah. That's just tap water. I don't understand. That's part of my rent. That's just... Yeah. <laughs> That's included <laughs> in my rent. I don't understand. I'm gonna drink it. Exactly. Okay. Last question. Fuck, Mary kill. Jose. <laughs> Jacob. And Taylor Lautner. Uh, easy. Is it? Easy. Easy. Go. Mary Taylor Lautner. Kill Jacob. Fuck, Jose. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> 
Because to be fair, I don't think we, I don't know anything about Jose. I don't like him, but like, I'm good for like a one shag, right? Like a one night thing. Did Whatever. you just say shag on this podcast? Listen, I, I forgot words. <laughs> that just was in my Do you have a gold reason. tooth, you 70s uh, <laughs> swinger? Like, who are you? I mean, nothing about this has proved that I am not living that fantasy. That's right true. Now, so. <laughs> Well, yeah, and also fuck Jacob, so... And Taylor Lautner seems fine, so... Okay. Obviously, <laughs> I just want to kick Jose, but, like, kill him, you know what I mean? <laughs> just a nice kick. I just want to kick yeah. him. Hey. <laughs> um, yes, I would definitely fuck Jacob, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> just, like... You know what I mean? Oh, my God. And then I would marry Taylor Lautner. <laughs> oh, my God. That nice tush. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Ugh. Listen, we don't know what Jose's packing. We don't know. He's packing not understanding consent. That's for goddamn sure. Okay, yeah, but same with Jacob. That's true. Allie, did you forget our entire podcast? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> But at least in this one, I'm like, hey, I want this. Let's go, sir. That's what I'm... He's like, yeah, okay, cool. Well, I know, but I don't know anything about Jose. Well, that's what I'm saying. Jose, you can be... uh, At least in this scenario, you're like, I am, I am, like, initiating this interaction. Yeah, same with Jacob. God bless, at least at this point, he's legal. (sighs) I guess, whatever. He's just got such a nice butt. I... (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I can't blame you there. Okay. God, I really don't want to talk about this chapter. <laughs> okay. So you have chapters 13 and 14. This yeah, week. baby. Um, yikes. Where we left off last week was, oh yeah, with Christian Gray screaming at Anna to go to bed. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, gross. So, chapter 13 starts off with... Anna being worried that she was too negative in her response to the contract. As you do. She calls her mom. Also, as you do. Um, before yeah. your graduation. Yeah. Her sure. mom makes some excuse that she can't come because her husband is dying? No, he just had hurt himself. Debra, um, and... Oh, my God. <laughs> well, he's, like, accident-prone or whatever, and he just, like, can't move, and he just, like, needs to scream from the couch to, like, have milk. I don't know what men need. It's just... Anyway, it's fine. She ca- continues to call her laptop the mean machine. Just another check mark on Anna's inability to just, like think as a standard human being, I guess. I don't know. Or just, like, get with the times. Please. Anything. <laughs> Please. I just don't understand. You have an email account, but, like, <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> it's uh, the apparently the most up-to-date software that has ever existed, ever. And you need to call it mean? I just don't... I, yeah, <laughs> I feel bad for that, like, that poor tech boy that was setting it up and was, like, so excited. And he was just like, oh, man, it's got, like, every program you could ever want in here. Like, I'm so jealous. This thing is, like, so great. And she's like, yeah, I'm just gonna, like, send some emails. He's like, what? <laughs> ma'am. Sorry? <laughs> ma'am, it has this thing <laughs> called Photo Booth. <laughs> <laughs> it has all of the Adobe Creative Cloud. You have to... That's so expensive, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, you don't understand. You can draw on here and she's like nah 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 (laughs) email though you can do email i just want to use safari (laughs) i don't understand he's just crying he's just i just (laughs) they're gonna kill me when i go back and do my report on this you don't understand (laughs) (laughs) oh god anyways so she checks her email from christian and it's literally the grossest email thus far. Yeah. Because all he does is he sends her the definition of submissive. Oh. And he doesn't even cite it. Like, gross. <laughs> Sir. And then after, so he copies and pastes it in there. 
And then he says, please bear this in mind for our meeting on Wednesday. Ugh, gross. But our girl really slaps it back, comes with the greatest fucking move in all time, and is like, yeah, all right. I, I read your little definition or whatever. Shall I send you another one? And then sends the fucking, like, definition for compromise. And it's so powerful. It exudes so much energy. It, especially because they're still in the same mode of changing the subjects. God, I hate it's it. It's the worst. But she changes this one to my issues, ellipses. What about your issues? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What's your fucking damage, Christian? <laughs> I wish that she had just sent that back as the email. Yeah. Because he would have yeah. lost it. Absolutely. Um, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> just slammed himself against her window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> no one talks about me that way. <laughs> He'd have just, like, had one of those, like, sky planes that had oh, it's just been, like, rude. <laughs> <laughs> like a sad face. Yeah. Like, a sad face. <laughs> like, hey, come on. <laughs> Let's be civil. What about trust? <laughs> Um, God. Okay. And so he sends us back and he's like, I will collect you from your apartment tomorrow. Um, and she's like, actually, oh yeah. So the subject line, 2011, women can drive. (laughs) (laughs) God, Anastasia Steele, you're my favorite sometimes. She's so feisty. I love it. She's bringing the heat. God, because sometimes it's like those little sparks that I'm like, yes, I actually really enjoy you. Uh-huh. And then it just, where does it go? Where does it go? <laughs> I mean, same with Bella, too. I feel like we had that. That's true. We were like, oh, there's some cool clips. And then you're like, oh, you're bad all the time. Yeah. Uh, they end up deciding that she can drive. Whoa. <laughs> Weird. Whoa. What? <laughs> oh, God. Um, it, because she wants a, quote, quick getaway. Um, yikes. Well, yeah. Um, but also mood. <laughs> so, anyways, it's great. So, she goes to work. Um, Paul? I don't remember him, but apparently he's back from Princeton. <laughs> and is no like, idea. I don't, I don't remember this person. <laughs> I don't. Is this person new? I don't, why does they, why do they make me think I remember this person and I don't? <laughs> Anyways, so Kate has apparently a plethora of dresses that she can lend to Anna, and they're apparently the same size, so that works out well. I love that. Yep, very... Oh, thank God. Um, convenient for this. And so she chooses a plum-colored dress, because it's mm. demure, who says demure, and business-like for this. Mm. Um, and so she... Because we're doing business. Yes. Um, she has this minor freak out about makeup, which, I mean, mood, but the main reason why is because her, quote, literary heroines didn't have to deal with this. (laughs) And so she didn't know how to deal with this. Now, okay. Okay. Back up a second, because (laughs) now, listen, maybe you did not have guardians that taught you how to do makeup, and that was something that you were interested in, and maybe YouTube didn't exist when you needed it. Sure. Okay, fair. But you were looking in print books for this? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Maybe not the best thing, Anastasia Steele. Okay, so maybe search different places, you smarty pants. Uh, You fucking literate bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe find something with pictures. (laughs) Oh, God. There was a tweet that was like, I used to be the, like, such a book is better kind of bitch, and now I'm illiterate. (laughs) 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 Such a move. Oh, God. That's so real. God damn. Um, 
I say as we read two chapters of something every week. Absolutely. And I still can't read. <laughs> like it's an out of contractual obligation. <laughs> That's true. I we're trying to keep our brains sharp, but it's not working. <laughs> This is my version of doing a crossword puzzle every day. Oh my god. <laughs> Just flexing the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do anything. Um, yeah. <laughs> so she pulls up to the Heathman. And then she, so she obviously sees Christian at the bar. She does mm-hmm. something that I feel like is very appropriate of Anna. And also I feel like Bella would have done this too. Where she just kind of like stares at him from the back. And this is the first time where I feel like we we get that glimpse of her personality because it's like a moment where she steadies herself, but is also like, damn, this boy I'm seeing, he's kind of cute. Um, and I was like, all right, finally, like, we see something here. Um, and so she's trying to placate him a little bit by doing the like, I'll have what you're having. And it's fine, I guess. But then things get gross v quick because (laughs) so she wants to get into discussing the contract immediately and christian kind of wants to go a little bit slower because they're in public i don't know why um but then it doesn't matter because (laughs) anna's like you know this contract um it's actually not legally enforceable so i could just like leave fyi (laughs) I know law now, so bye, Christian. <laughs> um, which I love a lot. It's like, go, Anna. Tell them about your role here. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. So, but then Christian says something that I feel like is very hypocritical in this moment. He says, relationships like this are built on honesty and trust. If you don't trust me, trust me to know how I'm affecting you. How far I can go with you, how far I can take you. If you can't be honest with me, then we really can't do this. Really, Christian? Mm. Honesty and trust? Interesting. <laughs> That's a fun little fun little note you made there. Yeah. So he obviously knows this, but isn't able to actually act on it. So it's not that you're unaware of consent and relationships. Yeah. <laughs> it's that you just don't choose to act upon them. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well. Good to know. Great. So you're just. Good. Yeah. Just. The worst then. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. It's good to know when I'm making my assumptions of you that you're just not unaware of obvious cues. You just choose to ignore them then yeah good 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 great great um also can we talk about submissives rs for just like two seconds (laughs) real quick (laughs) oh my god so good it's so good um because you know el james had to copy and paste that backwards r from online oh absolutely because that is not something your computer just does nope (laughs) anyways they decide to go to his private dining room. Yeah. Does he, like, own the Heathman now? What is happening? I don't know. Apparently he just has so much money that he can just book out the, like, conference dining room or whatever that is. Um, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently you just have money that you can just literally set on fire in front yeah. of <laughs> the booming homeless population that we have in Portland here. It's fine. Um, like, listen, he needs to have a place where he can privately eat oysters and also maybe fuck someone. Right. Like, he can't just do that in a restaurant with other people. No. Come on. Maybe he's it. just a really messy eater. And he's just <laughs> he's really, just really nervous. He's self-conscious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's just a really slurpy boy. You know what I mean? Oh, what? <laughs> I hated that. I'm just saying. Okay, so he ordered for both of them. Ugh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Which would annoy me a lot, personally. Yeah. Um, like, you don't know what I like. Fuck you. I, that's exactly what I would say. Um, but apparently Anna seemed grateful with it because she doesn't want to make any more decisions tonight than she needs to. So Also fair. Yeah, I... 
listen, I guess that works for some people. Um, she also did order, like, 17 different fish courses, and I'm just really concerned. Yeah, like, what was your plan here, dude? Um, <laughs> why did you, why did you do that? Why, why, why? I like fish as much as the next person, but, like, what's your damage? Um, yeah, dude. Okay, yeah, so they talk about, they go, like, point by point through her issues with the contract like he printed out the email which like who does that <laughs> maybe he didn't want to have his phone out on the table it's fine i guess i guess yeah so he goes through the sexual health thing and he talks about how he like randomly drug tests his employees which like whoa <laughs> yikes that's so much so they do start with the oysters um what why why and she talks about this too like did you want to have this be like an aphrodisiac and then he's all like I don't need an aphrodisiac with you (laughs) (laughs) I'm a sex robot that does not affect me Uh, I can have sex under any circumstances (laughs) you just need to press this button (laughs) but you can't touch me (laughs) Um, (laughs) god I like this hybrid of, like, a robot and also, like, a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A sex robot. Oh, toe. my gosh. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> There's just so many words coming out of my mouth. Um, yeah. So, okay. He's talking about the language here. And he's mm-hmm. always, he's like, yeah, so honesty and trust. Ra ra ra. But then he's like... I, so you need to obey me in all these things. I want you to do that, but also I need you to do that. Think of it as role play, but also I need you to do it. So don't joke. It's like, thank you. Um, <laughs> what? Mm, are we, what? What's what happening? happening? <laughs> and also, <laughs> like, <laughs> with these oysters. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like fucking slurping down the oysters. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> Because eating oysters is not, like, an attractive meal to eat. There's no way to Especially do that casually. When and Anna's never had them before, so she's just kind of, like, floundering, being like, oh, is this how you do it? Exactly. God bless her. Well, and thankfully he t- reminded her that you don't chew them, because God, <laughs> ugh, God. Um, but, yeah. So, yikes. They go over the staying over and like the weekend things and uh, the annoying thing is he's like I he's like how about one day over one weekend per month you get to yourself but I get a midweek night that week and so it's like I so I heard your complaint but I'm not really gonna do anything about it (laughs) no what if I just moved it around so it looked like it was actually giving you something? But in fact, I'm not. He needs to work at, like, a cell phone company or something because he's such a little trickster. Yeah. I don't understand. And also, he's like, actually, one month isn't going to work for me. We should do three months because it's really not enough time for you to see if this is good enough for you. Oh, God. And she even mentions here that she's feeling railroaded by this whole thing. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, it's so annoying. All of this is gross, and the language that he's using is gross. And yeah. he's like, <sighs> I don't know. I don't like it at all. That's fair. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that she wanted to talk about that was a deal breaker was the food thing because she was like I don't you can dictate the way that we have sex but we love the food yeah so they talk about the touching of like him not touching or her not touching him uh, and he was like because you can't and it's like that's not come on that's not an answer sorry <laughs> And then, okay, so they end up touching on, well, they end up (laughs) touching on the the no masturbation clause, which, like, whoa. Um, 
And unreal, unreal. His answer was because I want all your pleasure. Uh, That's uh, the grossest thing I've ever heard. If any partner was like, I don't want you to masturbate. That's like, that's crazy. That's so like weird and policing. It's like, no, all the joy and pleasure that you get has to be like from me or with me. Like that's so territorial and gross and like, (sighs) no. Yeah, that is, that sends like red flags to me for sure. Yeah. And she even mentions later on to, like, she tells him that he uses sex as a weapon. Um, Mm. And that's not something that you really want from a partner. Like, this is not, this should not be weaponizing stuff. Yikes. Mm. Um, So, no, not good. (laughs) Um, So, he's trying to convince her to just, well, at first he was convincing her to finish her food, and then he stopped caring about the food, and he just wanted to have sex with her in this dining room space, but Anna was like, actually, no, I'm just going to eat my food now. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) I came here for dinner. (laughs) I came here for a free meal, so. Thanks. Um... And so she decides that she wants to leave. And that it's better off if she just leaves. Um, Because she kind of knows how it's going to go if she stays. (sighs) Eh. Look at that self-control. Look at that. Good job, Anna. Perseverance. Look at that. Go team. Go team. Um, And he ends up just, like, trash-talking her car as they leave. (sighs) Thank you, Christian. (laughs) That. You elite as fuck! <laughs> exactly. As if she hasn't been driving it for years. As if she didn't tell you that it was going to be fine. Um, and But the thing is, is so that as she's leaving, she it starts, like, crying. Because she knows that it feels like a goodbye to her, right? Um, mm. And so as she gets back... There's an email from Christian. Great, of course. Um, And the way that it comes off to her when she reads it is um, she says, I am not a merger. I am not an acquisition. Um, And she says, like, reading this, I might as well be. And so she doesn't respond to it. She just goes to bed. Mm -hmm. And that's where the chapter ends. So chapter 14, it's graduation day. Bam, bam, bam. Let's get ready to graduate. Oh, God. Not again. <laughs> Please. No. One more time. Let's get No. Not again. <laughs> um, so chapter 14 starts off on kind of a buck wild note. Um, because Anna has her first sex dream on graduation day. As you do. Yeah. You know. Sure. <laughs> it is, it's It's interesting the way that they do that, too, because, like, it makes it, because, like, it opens up with being, like, there's, like, a, I, listen, whatever. <laughs> it's being, like, there's sex stuff happening, and there's, like, a whip or whatever, and you're, like, oh, shit, I'm in it. It's just funny to being, like, fuck you, Christian, I'm not doing anything, and it's, like, so I'm in bed with Christian, right? Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very it's sexicity. Like, just a dream. Yep. Just a sex dream. And, you know, like, as you handle your sex dream, you just go into the kitchen and you just make a bagel and pretend like nothing happened. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. That is yep. how you, that's what you do. Yep. That's what you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so she just talks to Kate like nothing happened and listens to her graduation speech like nothing happened. <laughs> it's very yeah. good. As she gets dressed, her... I think it's her dad. Yep, comes over. And they get ready to head to the gym for her to graduate. Um, And this is when things get a little bit interesting, right? Because as we remember from the beginning, Christian Gray is speaking at the graduation. So is Kate. So there's a lot of, like, 
Oh, Christian Grey is up there. Why won't he look at me? Ah, now he's looking at me. Ah. <laughs> and so Kate starts to speak. And her speech is great. Shocking. Truly. And then Christian does his speech. And we learn a little bit more about him at this time. Um, m notably what he's been doing on the phone during all of these chapters, I think. Yeah. Like, we kind of knew it was about his business, but not really, I think. Um, one of my favorite things during this is when Anna says, poor, fucked up, kinky, philanthropic Christian. Uh, because there's just okay. so much happening there. Um, so, he does a speech, it's great, whatever. She goes up there, and apparently they have this, like, long conversation, which seems very unrealistic for what actually happens on a graduation stage. Because <laughs> the, the graduation moment on a stage is so speedy, and yet yeah. they're, they're able to have this, like, back-and-forth dialogue. They, like, have a conversation. It's like, people have to move. People gotta go. Yeah. Because for some reason... So she says there's, like, 400 people there, which seems mm -hmm. relatively normal for yeah. a college graduation. Um, but <laughs> he ends up talking to her, and he's like, do you have a problem with your laptop? Um, <laughs> and then he's like, well, you're ignoring my emails. Rah, rah, rah. So nothing really happens there. And she's like, I, can I have my diploma, <laughs> Can I just <laughs> leave? <laughs> can I just <can> <laughs> <laughs> He's just holding it above his head. <laughs> uh, nope, nope. <laughs> Everyone's just looking at him like, sir, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? We invited you here as a guest. <laughs> I know you pay our school so much money, but like, this is just a child. <laughs> this <is> inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to graduate. I don't understand. <laughs> yes. So... Then we find out at the end, Kate brings Anna over to talk to Christian. There's so much happening. Um, Anna's like, I have things to do. Like, I'm graduate. I don't understand. This is my day. <laughs> Anyways, there's like a lot of stuff happening during the rest of this chapter. Because Kate is up to shenanigans. Always. Always. Um <laughs> She's scheming and dreaming. Yeah, and it's... I don't know what the best way is to describe to someone who... Like, to an audience that hasn't read this. They go to this kind of marquee after area. Where Anna's dad is Anna, Christian, Kate, and her brother are. And for mm -hmm. some reason, Kate's brother is all, like happy to be there and <laughs> excited to see Anna. Christian is all upset up by that. Shocking to no one. <laughs> and then Kate goes and says to Anna's dad that Anna and Christian are dating when I mean yeah but also no. And the way she, because she's like, hey, this is me and his boyfriend, Christian Gray. It's like, hold on. Up, 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 here. Right. Excuse me. So it sets off a lot of things yeah. that didn't need to be started, I think, with <laughs> them. Yeah. They, Christian and Ray end up talking and, like, seeming to have a, a great conversation between the two of them. And then when Ray leaves f to go, like, freshen up or something, Christian and Anna are talking. Of course, like, there's nobody else in the room. And <sighs> Christian pulls his usual bullshit. Where he's like, you know this could be great, right? And she's like, yeah, but I want more. Um, like, I want an actual relationship. Yeah. And then, of course, because she's with Christian, um, and she's all excited about her day, 
She ends up saying mm. yes to him. Now, the frustrating thing is, right, it's like she said yes, but, like, mm -hmm. it's an actual contract, right? So yeah. she still needs to sign it, question mark? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think she was saying, like, she was open to the idea of trying it. She was like, I think I'm, like, ready to move forward with, like, the agreement or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so she just told him that she wants more. And so when her dad comes back, he's like, let's go to lunch. And he's like, actually, mm, no. So. I don't do lunch. I don't do, <laughs> I don't do lunch. <laughs> oh, God. Of course. I say she on sex pheromones alone. Of course. Because I am a robot. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> when they come back, Ray leaves. And then. Anna finally charges her phone for the first time in a day, sees all of Christian's <laughs> texts, <laughs> where he's just dragging her for her poor beetle, which is <laughs> rude. And then she realizes that he's coming over. <gasps> um, I was like, hold on. <laughs> what weird. And then she's going to finally give him back those books, those first edition books. And the last thing in this chapter is her writing a quote on paper that she wraps them in. Um, and that's it, is them being really gross to each other. Bah, 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 bah. Bam, 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 bam. And that's it. Yeah. So next week is chapters 15 and 16. And we are getting close. To being done. Just in general. Yeah. <laughs> okay. To finishing this first book and finally watching oh, wow. um, the oh. first movie. I'm dreading it. I am too. <laughs> so I want to give a shout out to our lovely patrons. Um, we were tweeted in a BuzzFeed article this week of 21 Twilight tweets that'll make you say, damn, I actually missed this movie. So we are going to be <laughs> using this as a starting point for thanking our patrons this week. So I, I want to say thank you to Shannon Clearwater, who is the tweet, um, Robert Pattinson deserved an Oscar for saying, you better hold on spider monkey with a straight face. So jot that down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you to Jessica Stanley, who is major hole in the Twilight plotline. What happens when Bella gets a period? <laughs> <laughs> we ask that so much. So often. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, and thank you so much to Katie Weber, who is the tweet. I don't remember which part it was. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> But it was either where Jacob finally cut his hair short or when he first took his shirt off. But either part was when I became sexually awakened because it was, one, tweeted on my birthday, and two, me. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I'm going to tweet this out because all of these are going on our Twitter. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> This whole thread. This whole thread is so real. Holy crap. Okay. Um, next, it's time for Taylor Brown Browntown. Um, also, I need more fan fictions. So if y'all want to take over Taylor Brown Browntown, sorry, Taylor. Come for her game. Come for yeah. a game. <laughs> Send me fan fictions, please. <laughs> I need them. Okay. So this one, again, I think I didn't do. I don't know is titled Just a Human Game. It's written by, oh god, um, fairy spell? But the fairy is, like, how it's supposed to be spelled. Uh -huh. um, Bella knows that Rosalie's human life was unwillingly cut short, so she suggests they play only the most human game there is, the game of life. It starts out fun until the Colons begin to take it a little too seriously and let secrets unfold. 
and this was published on December 10th of 2007. Did you ever play that game growing up? Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, I didn't play it, like, extensively, but it was, like, I've, I've played it before. But I was always just, like, one of those people that was like, oh, if you don't go to college, you could just easily win this game. <laughs> and that's not really a great metaphor for life, huh? I loved that game so much. I loved spinning the little, like, turn style. The spinner is is an underutilized board game mechanic. I think that spinner is very good. I agree. Oh, yeah, I used to love that game so much. And now the idea of playing that, I, I don't know if it would stress me out or if it would just actually be cathartic. I'm just like, oh, simple steps <laughs> can win this game. Only one way to find out. Okay, so this is from chapter two, <laughs> insurances and family practices. My gaze fell on Alice as she uttered a loud squeal. My turn, she cried, and in a motion so swift, I had barely time to register it. She, she flicked the career and salary cards in my direction. Come on, hold them out. Slightly alarmed, I did as I was told, starting with the career cards. Before I knew it, Alice was holding one between her slim fingers and waving it in the air. I'm a... She began proudly, and then she paused. As she stared at the card, a sudden look of utmost terror crossed her face. Jasper leaned sideways to inspect the card, but just then Alice let out a loud, heartbreaking wail. I'm a salesperson! The rest of the colons instantly broke into laughter, with the exception of Jasper, who merely grinned sympathetically. But it took me a moment to discern the cause of her sorrow. Not that I needed to, for Alice then burst out again. How can a salesperson shop? I need to shop, and yet I have to make others shop? This is the one time I get to relive my human life, and it turns out to be a conspiracy against me? What did I do wrong, Bella? Please, please, can I choose another card? And scene. I love that. Yeah. Wow. She was very upset. It's very good. Yeah, no, I'm a fan. Yes. <sighs> well, as you say in Seattle... Get bit. Get whipped. Woohoo! This is an Earbud Media production. You can find us on Twitter at Earbud Media and listen to the rest of our shows. You can find this show on Twitter at Into the Twilight, as well as Into the Twilight Show. You can send us an email at Into the Twilight Show at gmail.com. You can also become a sponsor of the show or buy some merch at Into the Twilight Our art is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at Your Ghost Toast 44 on Instagram, and our music is done by Eli Krauss. You can find at Eli Sour Krauss and KraussFilms.com. The intro and outro is by KB Smith. You can find it kb underscore underscore smith on twitter you can find ally on twitter at into wild places and you can find me at dyke discourse you've been listening to earbud media production earbud media audio for everyone